Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Women Swimming and Diving Through the Decades. Tonight we have a great decade, the decade of the 80s. Also happens to be my decade at Bucknell, so I, of course, choose this one as the best. My name is Todd Newcomb. I want to welcome you to this session. We've got five outstanding alums joining head coach Dan Schinnerer and one of our current student athletes, Sophia Donati. Sophia is a sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and she specializes in the freestyle events. And we're really happy, Sophia, that you're able to join us tonight. So thank you for doing that. I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for tonight's event. Geisinger has done a great job throughout the pandemic here in our area and elsewhere. And as always, they do a great job with our student athletes at Bucknell day in and day out. So thank you to Geisinger. So before I turn it over to coach, I want to introduce our alums. And as I mentioned, we've got a great group. I will introduce the ladies with their maiden names um, so that most Bucknellians will recognize those names first probably. And our first alum is one of our most decorated swimmers ever from the class of 1982, Kathy Frazier. Kathy is one of only two three-time team captains in program history. She served in that honor as a sophomore, junior, and a senior. She was eight, four, and five in dual meet career and graduated with eight school records. She was a 14-time individual All-American, as well as a three-time All-American as part of decorated relay units. Kathy included among those All-American citations were four at the 50 fly, three at the 100 fly, three at the 100 free, two at the 50 free, and one each in the 100 IM and 200 fly. Kathy posted three top five finishes at the AIWA Division II National Championships. She won the Christy Matthewson Award at the Department Senior Awards Dinner, and she was a first ballot inductee into the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame in 1987. Our next guest from the class of 1987 is Susie Knight. She is also a Bucknell parent. Caroline is a, was, a, was a member of the Bucknell swimming team. And her husband, Peter, class of 85, was also a swimmer at Bucknell and I believe also played water polo for the Bison. Susie won the East Coast Conference individual title in the 50 free in both 1984 and 1985. Our next guest, also from the class of 1987, is Kathy Lynch. She was the team captain during both the 85, 86 and 86, 87 seasons. She won eight East Coast Conference individual championships, including three each in the 100 and 200 back. She graduated with 10 school individual and relay records and two ECC records. She was a two-time East Coast Conference Women's Swimming and Diving Scholar Athlete of the Year, winning in both 1985 and 1987. Kathy was an academic all district selection as well in 1987. She won the program's Robert A. Latour award in 1987. She also won the Christy Mathewson and the Edward W. Pangburn awards at the athletic department's senior awards dinner. Kathy was inducted into the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame in 1998. Our next guest from the great class of 1998 is Karen Oliver. She was the team captain during the 87, 88 season. She was a member of the ECC gold medal, 800 free relay units in both 1985 and 1987. She won the program's Robert A. Latour Award in 1988, and she won the Bison Club Award at the Athletic Department's Senior Awards Dinner. Our next guest and final guest tonight, also from the class of 1988, is Cheryl Trepp. She won the ECC individual titles in both the 500 and 1650 freestyles in 1985. She was also part of the ECC gold medal relay unit in 1985. And unfortunately for Cheryl, she had a shoulder injury, which cut her career short at Bucknell. But we're nevertheless glad to have her on with the rest of her teammates tonight. So coach, outstanding group. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Todd. And similar to some of the other calls, it feels like we might use up the entire time just going through the accolades and accomplishments. And it's, it's just tremendous. I know Sophia and I are really excited to have the conversation this evening um, from just a very distinguished group of alumni, uh, a lot of knowledge to be shared, and Sophia and I are excited to hear that, um, a lot of memories to revisit, and hopefully that'll be a lot of fun for everybody. But before we turn our attention to looking back, we'd love to hear a little kind of update on where you're at now, where you're at geographically, where you're at in a career, 
where, where your family's at. And so whatever kind of update you feel is, is relevant, we would, we would love to hear that. And so I'm just gonna go around the boxes on my screen. I think we've all become probably too adept at how this all works. Um, just working kind of clockwise, at least on my screen, we'll have Karen go first to give her update on what where she's at right now. Sure, thanks coach. Um, so I still uh, live outside of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so from, from New England and uh, live with my husband, but I'm pretty much an empty nester. I have a son who uh, graduated college in, in 2018 and he's out on his own. Uh, and my daughter, uh, Megan, is a senior at, at Gettysburg College, uh, graduating in, in uh, hopefully in, in, in May uh, and just got back in the pool. She's a swimmer, a swimmer there. Um, I actually just uh, did a, a career change, if, if you will. Um, I am uh, at a local uh, credit union, uh, standing up an experience design program uh, and uh, just kind of enjoying uh, maybe a kind of a second phase of, of career doing a few different things and uh, taking a few classes um, at a local university. Great, thank you. Um, we have two Kathy's on the call. So we'll go to Kathy Frazier. I'll just to use the last names just to make sure we're clear on that. So Kathy Frazier, you can go next. Sure. Um, yeah, so I live outside of Allentown in McCunchy, Pennsylvania. And I've been in this area for, I don't know, maybe 25 or so years. And uh, I just retired, for, so I don't work anymore, but I spent over 20 years in the utility industry in community and regulatory affairs. Prior to that, I was at Lehigh University in um, a business center for over 10 years, and I had a couple other jobs in there. But so right now I, I, I did retire well, actually last spring, right when coronavirus hit. So it's been a very interesting time. But one of the advantages of that is that I can get back in the pool when they're open. So that was one of my retirement goals is to get back into to, to shape and to do that. So um, that's pretty much where I am, what I'm doing. And right now uh, I, I'm living with my three cats. That's how it works. I inherited two animals. So I don't know if I'm a crazy cat lady or not, but we're, we're making do right now. Thanks, Kathy. And what is the swimming re regimen right now? How, how many practices, how many yards per week? All right. Well, right now, my goal is three to four times per week, uh, and I'm averaging about 3,500 meters uh, a session. It's good work. It's good work. I'm trying. Thank you. Susie, you can go next. Okay. Well, I am not far from Kathy Fraser. I'm just outside of Reading, PA, which is about, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes north of Philadelphia. And I have two kids, but they're grown up and, and gone. Caroline was a swimmer at Bucknell. She graduated a couple years ago. And my son, Tom, he's a little bit older and he lives in Boston. And uh, I have a grandson. Uh, they live up there in Boston. And so I get to, I've gotten to see them a lot over the pandemic because we kind of isolated and then got together. And so I think I've spent more time with those guys than I, I ever would have before. So it's, it hasn't been too bad. Um, I'm married to Pete. He was a swimmer, class of 1985. Um, I write for the local newspaper. I have a food column. So I do a little food photography and writing about food and recipes and nutrition. And before the pandemic, I taught swim lessons at the local fitness center, but I have not done that since um, the pandemic started. So I Hope I'll start up with that again. I teach a lot of little kids, um, but some adults too. And I do a little bit of work with people trying to get back into swimming. Maybe they do triathlons. A lot of triathletes, um, the swimming part is a little bit less developed. And so they need some help doing that. So I look forward to getting back in the water. I have not been swimming or in the water this whole time. So uh, I'm definitely missing that. Um, so I guess, I guess that's the main, main idea. Great. How old's your grandson? He's two. He just turned two. Very and he's nice. so much fun. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Kathy Lynch, you're next. Hi. I am living in Skillman, New Jersey, which is north, a little north and west of Princeton. 
And I have been in and around the Princeton area for a long time. I am a Jersey girl officially, and I do not have children. Um, I have one cat, so I think I'm safe. And her name is Hope. I adopted her during COVID. I have been a licensed massage therapist for the past 19 years, and I never really stopped swimming. I dabble. I dabble in swimming, and it's kind of become my mental health exercise, like yoga in the water is how I like to think of it. Um, and this year, I too am going through a transition. I guess that's the theme. I'm in the midst of establishing a 501c3. I really feel passionate about environmental issues and I've been on the sidelines worrying and thinking about it forever. And now I really wanna jump in and do something about it. So that's my next task. But um, all in all, I'm just feeling really grateful. I got my first vaccine shot yesterday. I have good health and uh, I know a lot of great, a lot of great people in my life. So, yeah. That's great. Not to compare workout regimes, but you said you never really left the pool. What is your swimming regime right now? I, I go for quality, not quantity. And uh, I try to get there, you know, twi twice a week is good. And honest, this is how I knew something had changed. I don't actually like keep track. I kind of go with time. Like I've got 45 minutes, I've got an hour, but um, yeah, I doesn't, uh, I, I have. Go I, by feel is a good thing sometimes. Kind of, yes, it's all, it's all. We're, uh, we're good. All right, great. And Cheryl, you have to tell us where you're at <laughs> because you're making us all jealous and you need to tell us the more backstory. Uh, sorry about that. I mean, my, my swimming was, I was just scuba diving. So um, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in La Paz um, in Mexico and uh, just uh, sort of on a whim decided I couldn't take the snow anymore. And, I think some, somehow I was cursed because I, like I said, I hurt my ankle just before getting here. So I've just been diving with a brace on my ankle. So I refuse to let that stop me. Um, but I'm, I'm back after living in London and uh, I came back to Connecticut, my, my husband, and uh, we raised three kids, uh, all swimmers and water polo players. Um, youngest is a senior at GW in uh, Washington, DC. Um, I had a full house during COVID because they all happened to move back. So uh, we've been having a lot of family time this last year. Well, it's only been a year. <laughs> so um, I am uh, my, uh, I, I did a lot of different things, but I, once I had kids, I started um, my own photography business. I do a lot of events up until COVID. And uh, alongside of that, when my kids left home, well, before they move back, I got involved in local politics and um, have all, so I'm in a, a very, very local level of politics and also uh, run a, um, a pack for my um, trying to get people more involved in, in, in local politics and understanding that it all starts local if you want anything to, to really happen. So uh, that's what I've been doing besides a lot of cooking this last year. <laughs> Those water polo players eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, thank you everybody for sharing, you know, kind of where you where you've gotten to now. And now the fun begins as we get to start to look back. Um, and so the first question is, you know, how did you get to Bucknell? It's an interesting thing. Uh, the recruiting process, the college search process has evolved. It's evolved a lot in the last 12 months. I never thought I would spend more time talking to recruits on a computer than I have talking to them in person. But virtual recruiting has become not only a thing, but currently the only thing that we can do. Um, but I'm curious to hear about kind of what led you to Bucknell, what and what ultimately led you to decide that Bucknell was the place for you. And so uh, with that, we'll go to Karen. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, being from, from New England, to be completely honest, I didn't know anything about Bucknell. Um, definitely wanted to, to go someplace that I could be uh, competitive with, with swimming, um, but I was primarily looking in, in the New England area. Um, and when I got to, to Pennsylvania, and again, 
it's a very big state and it's far away from, from Massachusetts and, you know, about six, six, seven hours. Um, but I think what, you know, the campus, although it's changed a lot over time, still, still, you know, beautiful um, back then. And I still have a very vivid memory um, of meeting our coach at the time, uh, Lynn Comer, and just, I mean, other than saying she makes a very strong first impression um, <laughs> with the excitement and the hair, of course. <laughs> um, it, like I said, just, uh, I think was just so refreshing. Um, and, you know, being a female coach, I think really, really stuck, stuck with me. Um, so when I was making my choice, um, you know, it was hard because like I said, it was, it was far away. I didn't know a lot about the school, but um, again, uh, Lynn was just such a, um, you know, a positive force. I, you know, kind of, kind of couldn't say no, I guess. And, and, and so I, I made the choice and it was, it was a really great one. Great. And you will be happy to know that the, the Massachusetts connection continues and, and is a very strong connection uh, throughout the, even the current team. We have several swimmers and we already have commits from next year for Massachusetts. So every, a lot of people are willing to make that little extra long drive to still come to Bucknell. Definitely. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great place. And I think, um, you know, again, there's a lot of strong, you know, division one, but also division three schools in, in New England. So I imagine, you, you know, you need to, to make a, you know, a case, but um, I think once they get on the campus and just the program and the facilities, it's, it's, you know, just a hard place to be. You're hired as my uh, as <laughs> coordinator there. That's great. So uh, Kathy Frazier, tell us your path to Buck now. Well, I, I grew up in Williamsport, so only a half an hour away. So I was very familiar with the school. My grandfather's a Bucknell graduate and my mother's a Bucknell graduate. And my brother Chip was already swimming at Bucknell. He's two years older than me. So I was very, very familiar with it. I did look at other schools. I did go around and, and do some tours of others, but I just kept coming back to Bucknell. It, it, it felt like home and it was, it was a great choice. Certainly. And another person that's kind of continued a Bucknell family connection, Susie, tell us your story of how you came to Bucknell. Well, I am from Pennsylvania. I grew up in Bethlehem. So my parents both went to Lehigh. And so I applied to all those schools, Lehigh, Gettysburg, Franklin and Marshall, Bucknell, I don't know, maybe Penn State. Um, so I, Bucknell was high on my list. I wanted to go to Bucknell. I, I don't remember exactly meeting Lynn the first time, which is unusual because she did have a great personality and great hair. But Kathy Lynch, maybe you can, maybe you can remember, but she, I think the story goes that she had come on board with Bucknell, you know, later in the recruiting year. We weren't really recruited. Maybe there was a phone call or a meeting. I don't remember. It was her first year. So uh, along with Kathy Lynch and Chris Ritzak at the time, her name is Christine McNeil now, and Ann Otta. The four of us, Kathy, Susie, Christine, and Ann, were recruited that year <laughs> by, by Lynn. But, it should, but Lynn didn't have a full year to gear up the way she did the following year when Karen came. Mm -hmm. So that year, she was able to get a whole crew of swimmers. But when Kathy Lynch and I came on, uh, I think there were only like 11 women on the team or something, including us. Wasn't it really small? Lynn didn't hadn't had a chance to get up and started yet. So, but anyway, she was in touch with me and I wanted to go to Bucknell and it all fell together that way. But recruiting is very different now than it, than it was yeah. then. Well, we, we, we had a similar with, with your daughter. I remember it came down to Bucknell and Lehigh, I think at that point. Yeah, it did. Yeah. She made a good choice then. <laughs> I think she did. <laughs> I don't know that anyone was influencing her in any way. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> well, I, not, I didn't realize I, until we did the call, um, and actually Brad Tufts recently sent me the top 10 lists from, he had a copy of them from, I, they, they were from like 1988, so they're the top oh, yeah. from that time. And I didn't know Pete was such an accomplished distance swimmer. So yes, he was. It was yes, you know, he was. Both, yeah, you, you had the sprinting and the distance side. Yes, I would jump out of the 50. I see Caroline followed your path, though. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Kathy Lynch, please tell us your story of how you came to Bucknell. 
two words, Lynn Comer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, force of nature, and I was torn between Gettysburg College, which is where my brother was attending at the time, and very good recruiting. Um, but Bucknell's pool, how could I pass it up? <laughs> um, and uh, no, really, no, it, it was Lynn. And then uh, the academic reputation. I don't even know how I first heard of it, frankly, but I'm very, very glad that I made that choice. Great. I'm curious because it came up when we were doing this uh, uh, with the men's side on the call. How many of you were ever promised a new pool? <laughs> yeah, we were, Kathy. My brother was, and he graduated in 80. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seemed to be a consistent theme from, for all coaches throughout that time period of mm -hmm. talk of a, a brand new pool. So finally, we met, you know, we got to the class of 2003, and they, they actually got that promise fulfilled. But it seemed like it started in the, the late 70s. Yep. Well, that's good. Uh, and Cheryl, please you know, tell us your story. Um, well, I, I mean, I'll. I'll, I'll start out. I, I went to, um, I was at Greenwich High School. I swam there and with um, some very um, unbelievably talented swimmers. And um, I didn't really think I was good enough to swim <laughs> in college. Um, so when I was looking at schools, I stopped by the pool and met Lynn, who convinced me otherwise. And uh, so when, and, and, I, and, I, and I walked, it was for me, it was walking, it was definitely not looking into the pool. It was walking on the campus that sold it, sold it to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, she, she definitely, uh, you know, cha changed every, the way I was looking at everything. So when, when she, when I got the call from her to say that we were, that I was in, I was thrilled You no, know, there was no set, no, no question at all, that I, that's where I was going to go mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and don't regret a, a minute of it. Um, and I, and I want to say that, uh, I went back to Bucknell because my son, was uh, um, swimming at ODP, uh, uh, playing water polo for ODP. And I walked into that pool and I was very jealous. <laughs> and I remember sending a, a, a picture to a few people on this call saying, this is not our pool. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you can still see that brick wall back there. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Um, Too short, short lived, yeah. but great. That's great. The pool, actually, where what, what you know is the pool, essentially has become the, the weight room. Uh, but there are still some last vestiges of the Freeze Rook pool below the weight room floor through a small door off of our pool deck. You can go down the stairs, and there is still the tile and the line, which is <laughs> the room, but you can still find the black lines for each of the lanes down there. I should have brought out the photo of our freshman when I, my freshman year our team photo it was really attractive <laughs> thank you for not doing that Did anyone else still picture lynn running around the pool yeah yes. i yeah yeah lynn and passed up no time no opportunity to exercise so exactly she running around the pool <laughs> i actually have heard those stories or a few stories yep. related to that so constant motion well we are very excited that Sophia, as a sophomore, went through her process, and it might have looked a little different than all of yours, but she chose to come to Bucknell and has done an awesome job in her first year and is working through a different kind of second year, but still um, very positive and upbeat and, and making the most out of the experience, which is what we have really emphasized with our team this year. And I know Sophia has got a question for the group, so I will kick it over to her. Yes. Hi, everyone. First of all, it's like very inspiring just to like hear your like love and passion for swimming, even so far out of the college experience. And that's really inspiring. Ooh, don't say so far out. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. But, <laughs> um, my question is, what advice would you give me and the other swimmers and divers on our team about the college swimming and diving experience at Bucknell? We could start with the same order. So Karen, do you want to start? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, having having a daughter who's who's swimming as well, it is it is different. I mean, I, I think when um, you know we were swimming, 
um, Division I swimming looked a lot different than, than what it does, does today. Um, and I think just how much you know, time and effort um, and discipline uh, that it takes to be a college athlete is, is super important um, and something that really um, you, know, you can leverage uh, you know, going out into the world, just you know, whether it's you know, time management, um, being able to, um, you know, adjust your schedule, you know, in, you know, especially times like this, right, you know, dealing with um, adversity, dealing, you know, being flexible, all of those things, I think, um, are, are really important as you're going out and kind of finding yourself, you know, in your, in your career. Um, people say, well, you know, how do you, you know, how did you kind of talk about, you know, swimming or, or, or talk about your experience? I had one um, experience where I actually talked about swimming, but it was because it was on my, you know, resume at the time and the person that I was interviewing with, his daughter was a diver. So it just struck up a conversation, you know, about being a college athlete um, and how impressed you know, that person was by, um, again, the dedication to the sport, and then also going to a, you know, a school like Bucknell, where you're really a student athlete. So, um, you know, you're also putting in the time and effort in the class. Uh, and that's, you know, just as important. So I think just being really confident in your, uh, in your choice, you know, to be a student athlete, um, I think just kind of helps you to carry yourself through, you um, you know, through interviews and even just have interesting, you know, kind of stories to tell about how, you know, that influenced, um, you know, your college experience and, and how you might carry it forward. I love that. Thank you so much. Kathy Frazier. Yeah. yeah, I guess the advice is have fun, enjoy it, because it really is an opportunity. And there's nothing like it in your life. I mean, it, it, it the teammates, the experiences, you can't replace it. So have fun, enjoy it and uh, while you can. And kind of taking off uh, a little bit from what Karen has said, as, as I was thinking about this call and looking back, swimming has impacted me in so many different ways that I never thought it would. Mm -hmm. So not just in the pool, but also in life. And, and as Karen has said, the life skills, but through the people, the friendships that I've developed, I mean, even moving to this area, one of the first things I did is I, I looked to a place I could swim and some of the people that I hooked up made me feel welcome in the community and there's some of my best friends here today. I've basically gotten some, some jobs because of my connections through swimming. I would go to the Y and then I got involved in the community and then someone would say, well, hey, how about this? Applied for a job and got it. So there's a lot of very positive things in life that I can take back to swimming. So if you sometimes feel it's too much and you don't want to do it, stick through it and there'll be better days, but, but have fun. Thank you. And I think that definitely rings true this year when it's really coming back to the love of swimming. It's got to be challenging and I give you an awful lot of credit. Thank you. Okay. Um, Susie. Yeah, well, I, I, my initial thought was that I would just say to enjoy yourself because you're going to make friends that you will always, always have. I, I've been in touch with Cheryl and Kathy and Karen the whole time. And if not for years, we can pick up again right where we started, even if there's been a gap of years. But what popped into my head when Kathy Fraser was talking was you'd be amazed how much swimming is going to echo through your life after this. And um, this little story just popped into my head where I was sitting at a volunteer meeting and this woman was about to head up this big fundraiser. And so she was bringing together the committee and she was saying these things about, here's our goal and, and we have, and you're, and you are going to be in charge of this and you're going to be in charge of that. And that's how it's going to come together to this one goal. And my hairs on my arms stuck up. I didn't really know this woman very well. And after the meeting, I said, I just said, I have to ask you if you, were you a swimmer? <laughs> and she said nothing about swimming at all. It was just something about the way she was talking and the way she was motivating the, the committee. And she said, yeah, I was on the champion, New Jersey championship team. I think it was Monmouth, New Jersey or something. She was on the championship team. And I said, I knew it, I knew it, you know, and um, <laughs> it's just amazing how you connect with those people in your community going forward. Even if you didn't swim with them, you know, at Bucknell, you meet them out in the community. And then I did get my current job through 
I started running a website for my daughter's swim team, you know, just a dumb little website. And uh, the newspaper editor uh, in our community was a member of the swim team. Uh, she was one of the moms and she said, do you wanna write for the newspaper? Cause I like your writing. And that's how I got my, my current job. <laughs> so it is, it is totally amazing how it will, it will really do you a service. And so just, just keep that in mind. It's, it's hard right now, but it pays dividends. Thank you. And I, I'm definitely biased. Both my parents are swimmers as well. So <laughs> it's just really cool to hear about like how swimming, <laughs> yeah. you know, an ongoing process throughout your life. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Kathy Lynch. Yeah. Uh, I, I can echo those, all those thoughts about the pool head community. Sometimes that's what I call it, fellow pool heads. Mm -hmm. uh, living in the Princeton area, I've been able to take advantage of the wonderful facility, Denunzio Pool. And for a long time, for 20 years, they allowed public members to, to participate. And so I it was a very small locker room and it was a limited time we could swim there. And we all got very close. I mean, these professors and all walks of life and that became a really strong community. So yes, it helps you build community wherever you go. But I'll just, so to add something a little different, um, this may sound strange, but I would say, enjoy your young, strong body while you have it. Um, I mean, I'm, yeah, uh, it's just in, enjoy that. Um, and Coach Dan, just cover your ears for a second. But I would also say, try not to burn out on swimming. Um, I think that's part of why I still enjoy it to this day is because I worked very hard while I was at Bucknell, not as much in high school, never harder than when I was at Bucknell, but um, yeah, just, you know, if you feel like you're reaching burnout, make sure you talk to your coach or to your, your, your teammates and find ways maybe just to take a break and maybe remember that there are a lot of other aspects to your college experience if you, if you can, you know, just take a, take a step back. Thank you for saying that, especially because I know that's a big issue in the sport sometimes as we start so young, but like, I would just seeing like how you guys to like keep up the swimming, I would really hate to burn out. And I'm glad like I have a relationship with Dan and the other coaches where I'm not gonna reach that point, but thank you so much. And then Cheryl. Uh, well, my, my advice is don't get hurt. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have to say, you know, we had a great group of friends, uh, friends for life. And even, even you know, I, I only swam the first year competitively and a little bit in the second year. Um, but uh, I, I lived with other swimmers and uh, they're still my friends and uh, carries through your life. My kids swam and uh, all through high school and, and I had one, one who played water polo in college. So uh, it definitely, it, it, it teaches you how to work hard and, and, and not give up. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a great experience. And I, like I said, like I, I echo Kathy on that one. You know, don't 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 hurt your body to the point where you where you can't come back from it. And can I add one? I'd like to add one more thing. I too highly recommend getting certified in scuba diving. <laughs> There's more to to water than just swimming. There are yes, a lot yeah. of wonderful water activities. So that another reason to stay healthy so that you can enjoy them. And um, yeah, yeah, it was. Yes, yeah. We do that as a family as well. Um, and I have to say, I thought, oh, I'm a swimmer. This is going to be, you know, this is going to be easy. And, um, you know, the classes are, are rigorous, but it's just, it's an amazing, um, and like Kathy said, just a different way to appreciate, um, you know, being comfortable in the water and just seeing the world in a, in a different way. There's, not, there's nothing, oh, there's nothing. Yeah, no, there's nothing to make you feel slower in the water than trying to keep up with fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for your answers. The first thing I'm going to do when I'm off this Zoom call is go to my best friend who's also on the team and like tell her how everyone has such a great friendship and just all the great things you said. So thank you so much. A lot, a lot of great words of wisdom there and uh, just connections all around and, and a connection um, pops into my mind. I actually did an interview back in November with uh, Doug Birdsong who was doing a coach's thing. And it came up of why I got into swimming was when I was a kid, I wanted to get my scuba license. And so that was the whole reason <laughs> I actually even started the sport of swimming as my dad told 
me as a six or seven year old that, you know, to, to get your license, you got to be a strong swimmer. And so that's how I even got into swimming. And as I told Doug, by the time I was 12, I was swimming so much that I never got my scuba license. But, you know, those, those are great connections and something that we can do. Um, Karen, you said it in your answer. You talked about all the interesting stories you have. And so mm -hmm. next question is my favorite question uh, of doing these is just sharing your most memorable experience. And, and it might be hard because I would imagine there's a lot. So if it's not the most memorable, at least one of the memorable experiences from your time as part mm -hmm. of the team. And then for this answer, we'll just kind of open it up so we don't always feel like we're going in a, in, in a circle. So I'm sure we, we will try not to talk over, but we'll just kind of open it up for whoever wants to go first and share a memorable experience from their swimming and diving time at Bucknell. Sure. Well, I think we, we talked about one um, that probably all of us um, can chime in about, uh, which was um, winning the conference championship. Um, it was... Uh, Susie, uh, Kathy, Anne, and Christine senior year. And um, just, you know, still, if you think about kind of vivid um, memories, you know, I don't remember a lot of races. I certainly don't remember a lot of my times, um, but that weekend, um, whether it was, you know, having, and they have their picture behind them, I'm sure, um, raising that trophy because it was a long time uh, coming against some of the, the teams in the conference. And that point it was, and guys correct me if I'm wrong, it was Delaware and, and Drexel, just really trying to overcome that. Um, they just kept always winning to just getting up in the morning. And I don't know if you guys remember, um, but our assistant coach was one of Lynn's really good friends, Marla. Um, and we had to walk the same way, like with the same people in the same, like as we kept going through the meet, as we were thinking we we're getting closer, you know, like we can win this thing. And I think there was one morning we started taking a wrong term and I, and I think Marla almost, you know, had a, had a heart attack because she said, no, we have to go this way. Um, so I don't know what other memories about that, you know, that weekend, but it was just so much fun. And I was able to, um, I listened to the um, guys' um, 80s uh, Zoom, which Susie actually made a cameo in if, if people didn't, didn't see that. I can't keep out of it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think one of the neatest things about that year, and I, it, it was fun to hear them say the same thing, is both teams won that year. And so the guys were um, were super supportive in 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 our victory. And then um, we didn't swim at the same championship. So the following weekend, um, we were there. A lot of us were there for that last night to have them win the championship as well, which was was pretty pretty cool. And it's just you know it stuck with me. Yeah, I just remember Kathy and I were in the last free relay, I guess, right? Because you and I were wet in that last picture. <laughs> And then we we got out of the pool. I wasn't even thinking and, and sort of was kind of like whisked over, I don't know, to wherever we had our picture taken and Christine and Anne were there. And then that one picture is taken and you and I are like drowned rats and the, the other two, <laughs> they already did their hair or whatever. But, but it was a fun moment. That was definitely a fun moment. That was also, I think my last swim meet. And so I was immediately in mourning, like what? is gonna to happen to me now. What my whole life was getting up and swimming every day. What's this gonna be like? And so I was a little bit, um, I had a real mix of emotions at that, at that time, but that's what I remember. I, I wanna talk about our training trip to California. Oh <laughs> I think that- Were we freshmen? Well, no, Cheryl was, no, we, I, we were sophomores. Cheryl was the freshman. Kathy was, I mean, Karen was freshman. Must be mentioned. Yeah, it was my freshman year, right? Yeah, yeah our freshman year, yeah. We, we were starved by Lynn Comer. <laughs> yes, I mean, before, and you know, before these organized training trips occurred, Lynn's like, yeah, I got a friend in California. We can, we can go there. And we did. And we slept on this man's, the floor of his house. We yeah. slept on the floor uh, and we would go out to the pool. It was an outdoor pool. Outside. Outside. Right, California. Outside. 
like degrees. 40 yeah. degrees. We're like, oh, it's going to be was coming yeah. off the pool. Steve, yeah, and and it was there were no lane lines, there were no flags. So for us backstrokers, it was a very challenging. Oh my God, it was torture and joy at the same time. Going yeah. to, uh, we got a day off. We got because it was around. And home. we went to the beach. New Year's Day, I think we got off. We went to um, Disneyland. Oh yeah, right, right. Yep, yeah, we did. And, you know, hijinks ensued. But anyway, it was, um, I think that's changed a little, Coach Dan. You guys have a yeah, little- Yeah, our training trip looks a little bit more, we'll just say structured. Uh, we do have lane lines and backstroke flags at the pool. Right. Um, and uh, Sophia can attest to that she did not have to sleep on the floor uh, with friends. We bought, we bought t-shirts and said, are we having fun yet? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you so, still have that? So, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn purchased us all t-shirts for uh, the end of the year that said we had fun. We had yeah. fun, <laughs> right. There was a lot of complaining. <laughs> <laughs> you are hungry. <laughs> she gave us rice cakes. Rice so, cakes. Didn't know where our next meal was coming. And I think the, the van rides were also very memorable, whether we were exiting from the very left lane across six lanes or wondering if we were gonna hit the roof of the parking garage. Yes. Well, anytime Lynn was driving the van and Kathy Lynch will attest. Remember the time it was snowing <laughs> and then her hair was sticking up. That, that was just a normal state of affairs. And she was driving and, and we were not, nobody was wearing a seatbelt or anything. It was safety kids. I mean, you have to worry about safety. <laughs> and it was snowing. And then that song, Bad Moon Rising, came off. <laughs> and we were singing that, like something bad's going to happen. But luckily we lived. And Lynn was the best. She she was so brave. It, nothing, none of this stuff bothered her at all. And why should we be bothered? You know. So it was to motivate awful. us in the morning to go to the pool after that first day when we realized it was going to be forty degrees every time we got into the pool in the morning. And she was just up and she was ready and we were going and she was enthusiastic. I move. <laughs> Kathy Frazier, tell us about. Well, I'm sitting there thinking, gosh, we miss so much. I mean, and you guys were a few, well, I was a few years before you, but it was so different back then. We had no conference meet to go to, absolutely none. So uh, another advice, enjoy the conference meets. You're fortunate to have that. But no, freshman year, if you didn't qualify for nationals, and, and they even told us, it was a big question, are we going to send you? We don't know if we got the money. So three of us qualified and they did. And I remember I was told, you better come back an All-American. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. So three of us went out to uh, Reno, Nevada. And that was interesting. And then sophomore year, we really didn't have a conference either. And then uh, our coach that year, to give her a lot of credit, she called around and we were able to get ourselves into a conference in the Philadelphia area. And when I was a junior and then as a senior, we kind of, you know, crashed in on a conference down in the University of Richmond. So that's what we had. And it was really, but we had a lot of fun. I mean, we, we really, really did have a lot of fun. So some of those memories, I, I was thinking about that, just how different times where we had no, no training trips over the holidays, whatever you could get at home, you got. Um, but I guess, you know, some other memorable, I remember my very first meet coming back and I was so exhausted I'm, I slept at four o'clock the next afternoon. I can't believe it. It was against Cornell. And I remember someone called me and said, hey, Kathy, you know? And I'm like, why? And they said, well, you know, you set some records. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but I remember my very last meet. And, and I think Karen, I can't remember, she said had mentioned their last meet. And I remember getting out of the pool. And back then, a lot of women didn't swim beyond age 21. And I was so, it was in Moscow, Idaho. I was so proud I did my best time <laughs> because I was old, you know, at 21. So I think that, you know, some of the things, the perspective has changed so much. It just, it just really has, but I'm so glad you women have the conferences and that you currently have the conferences and the training trips. That, that's wonderful. That's, that's one of the special things about these calls. And certainly I think back to a few years ago when we celebrated the first uh, women's varsity team at Bucknell and some of the conversations that came from that of just you know, where women's sports started, you know, collegiately and certainly at Bucknell and what that experience was like. And I know Sophia doesn't take anything for granted. She's great about appreciating everything 
but it just, you know, the, the things that we feel are common, you know, commonplace now, training trips, which is, good, which is good, it's the way it should yeah. be. But yeah. it, it is a great to hear in the reminders of, and the work that you all did to, to build the program to the point that it is. And so that's just another part of what makes these, these conversations so special. And speaking of special, you know, this is another good question of just, you know, the sport is so much about team and teammates and, and, and those, you, you've all said it in different ways, the, the lifelong friendships that come from your teammates. Um, so could you share uh, a story or just talk about a person that was very impactful to you, a teammate that made a difference that you really respected or made a, a, a great difference in your time at Buckman? Do we just jump in? Yeah, we can open up and just jump in on these. All right. Well, I'm just going to say Kathy Lynch. It, it's not one person, though, but I, Kathy Lynch was definitely the person we all looked looked at. I mean, she, she had a cadence to everything she did. She has this um, discipline. It's hard to describe. It goes for everything she does in her studies or um, just her social interactions, just very steadfast um she's very measured she she's very purposeful and to watch her swim was really fun it, it was she had confidence and you could tell she was a very confident looking athlete and she was fun to watch because you were confident she was going to pull it off and so she's definitely the one you know that i looked at but i also also can't you know, f forget to mention Christine Ritzak, who was one of our captains at the time. Um, talk about somebody who wouldn't say a mean word about anyone. And she had a great work ethic and um, she was a very strong breaststroker. And then Ann Otta, uh, well, her name was Walford, Ann Walford at the time. And Ann, Ann was always good for giving tips like when we went to California we also jumped over to Tijuana and she's the one who stood up and told us how to say where's the bathroom in Spanish <laughs> she's always giving like even these days like recently you know if your brown sugar is hard you know it's gotten hard in the pantry you just put a, a slice of white bread in there with your brown sugar and it'll soften up again she has uh, she's always just tips and tips galore and she was also another wonderful swimmer and so those three, um, and then I'm looking at Karen and Cheryl, you know, I can't just narrow it down to one. So I took over that question, but sorry. I'm going to say, no matter how fast you swam, Kathy Lynch could do it better. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I have to say, it really bothered me, Susie, and it still Stop does. It. And don't even you say got it, out Cheryl. Of so early. It was so easy for you. <laughs> I swam the 50 freestyle. Cheryl swam the 1650. There's only a little difference. <laughs> Small difference. Small difference. Can't swim it fast either. Those two laps. And my and and, and my son became a sprinter. He swam the 50 free. So yeah, so yeah. stop it. <laughs> yeah, I think looking you know looking at the program and and I really appreciate Kathy Fraser's perspective. Um, I ended up watching. Um, the documentary about the, the 76 women's Olympic team. Um, and that really struck me um, because I didn't really understand that a lot of these women, there were no division one swimming programs or very few. They, you know, encourage women to, you know, to come back after having children and, and this. And, and then the differences between men's and, and women's programs was just so stark. And that was only 10 years before we were at Bucknell, you know, which just, I, I didn't really understand the kind of the gravity of that. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of, you know, women that I looked at, I think just Lynn having a female division one coach. Um, again, I don't think I really understood the gravity of that either. Um, and she was just such a strong leader um, and she brought in you know, two of the um, women here, Susie and, and, and Kathy Lynch, but Christine and Anne, and they were just such a solid group. Um, I'd never been part of an all women's swim team. Um, I swam in high school, I swam in a co-ed team and a, and a club team. Um, so it was really a, an interesting dynamic with, with so many strong 
um, you know, female athletes. And then with Cheryl and I coming in, I think there were eight or 10 of us that kind of overtook the, you know, the team. Um, but, you know, the four um, women in front of us just set a, a, a very strong example about what it meant to be, um, you know, a college swimmer, uh, along with some of the, the, the upperclassmen uh, and also a student athlete, you know, to, to be successful in the water um, also meant you had to be successful in the classroom. And they really um, were just great role models and examples, um, you know, as, and I just feel very lucky we went through, um, you know, I went through three of my four years um, with, with, with those, you know, great teammates and, and great friends. Well, and I will, I'll add on to that because I think I would say Kathy Frazier was one of the people who, swimmers who I looked up to, even though I hadn't met her, she wasn't there when I was there, but her name was on that, you know, on the record board. It was you know, legend, just legendary, the standout and just a name that just um, was, I don't know, maybe that was somehow, a, a, I didn't even know that was a goal or someone I was trying to emulate, but um, that tradition, I guess that's the, the thought that building on what all, all the people who came before and how I, that's probably a piece that I'm, I'm realizing the power of that in our, this conversation. I know it intellectually, but you know, I'm really feeling it. And, and, and thank you, Susie, I'll give you that $20 later. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting you bring that up, Kelly. Thank you for your, for your kind remarks because it, it blows my mind. I was at Bucknell in the first five years of Title IX. Yeah. which is so hard to believe and the changes that I've seen over the years and it, it's just it's been really impressive and wonderful but I guess getting back to the the question the teammate that I admire the most and why I, I had a tough time with that because there's so many that I admired and had fun with and the person that I came up with was my coach my sophomore through senior years which was Joel Feldman and she was the one that, that opened more doors for us at the school. And she was the one, and, and she was just such a wonderful mentor. She understood swimming. She understood young women and really went to bat for us. So I, when I think back, I, I, I would have to say Joel was the one, I think that really had a major impact on me there as well as my teammates. I, I loved all my teammates. They were, they were wonderful, but I couldn't pick them out over any one over another. Well, that's great. And one of the, you know, we spent a lot of time looking back, but I know Sophia's got a question about kind of how you take all these wonderful experiences and then translate it forward. So without stealing her thunder, I'll kick it back over to Sophia. Yeah, so luckily I still have two and a half years here. So very thankful for that, but eventually I'll have to graduate. So do you have any advice about networking and finding the right job after a time book now? Anyone can jump in. I'll, I'll jump in. <laughs> um, I guess what I would say, what I learned was, I mean, you'll get a job, maybe you'll get a job somewhere and, um, you know, you'll develop a special interest within that job. You know, maybe, maybe if you work at a bank and you're doing financial analysis, you'll decide that you like the writing piece of what you're doing. But you'll think, well, I don't have an English degree or I don't have any writing. I was never published. I can't, I can't be a writer. And then, or maybe like you work for a construction company or something and you're managing projects and you decide you like, you'd, you're really good at laying out kitchens or something, but you think, well, I don't really have any design experience. I can't really go off and do that or whatever. Never think that. Everyone is faking it and they're faking it until they get good at it. And you can do that too. And you might need to get, you might need to retrain yourself. You might need to get more training, but there's a very good chance you can start doing what you want to do when you figure out what you want to do. And it takes a little, a little while. Don't be, don't be afraid to switch careers. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's like, you know, if you can, if you can last through a swim, any, any workout that any of us have done, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for, for me, it's, um, 
you know, just reach out and, 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 and network. I mean, you know, I think the Bucknell network is, is really strong. Um, like um, back, you know, when I was in school, there weren't a lot of um, Bucknellians from kind of the, the Massachusetts and New England area. And like we pointed out, there's, there's so many, um, I think Bucknell's reach has broadened so much just, you know, nationwide and, and even around the world and having that connection it's, it's really, it's very strong. So, um, you know, going back, you know, to reunions or, you know, jumping on something like this, or um, especially the, the kind of the swimming or even the athletic network, I think is, is, is really strong. Cause I think you have that appreciation um, for what it takes to be a, you know, to be a student athlete. And you know, that that person is, um, you know, smart and, and strong and, and driven. And those are really great qualities. Um, and those, you know, soft skills, like Susie said, you might not have the, um, you know, particular computer, you know, class or, or English degree, but you, you have the ability to, um, you know, be driven um, and, you know, be successful. You know, you, you have that in you. And I would echo what, what Kathy, I think both Kathy, Kathy said, um, I actually am in a, in a master's program. My second one, um, I started a year ago because my kids are, are off in college and I wanted to learn some, some new things. Um, and it was a leap for me because I'm a little older than some of the other people in the program. Um, but I wanted to learn new things. I wanted to, to try, you know, try something new. Um, and I just really think being, uh, you know, a, a Bucknell graduate, but also a student athlete, um, like you said, you can do anything. So, you know, kind of believe in yourself and, um, you know, don't hesitate to, to take a different path. Yeah, exactly. The skills that you're going to get from swimming are going to take you uh, very far. And you probably heard this, but there are a lot of skills that are directly transferable, I think, into the business world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got the goal setting, you've got the time management, you're, you're competitive, you're, you've got the degree behind you. There's, there's so many things there that you can take and, and do very well in the business community. And I guess the other advice I would give is don't put too much pressure on yourself to think that the first job or even the second job out there is, is, is going to, you know, set you on the path. And if you don't make the right decision, it's going to be a, a major flaw or mistake. And it's not. Uh, I remember turning to a coworker maybe 10 years ago after I'd been in the workforce for decades and, and said, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I still, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and I was so envious when I graduated and worried because so many people, I'm an engineer. I'm going to be a chemical engineer. I'm an accountant. I know exactly what I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And it took me a while to find that. And that's okay. And, but you will do fine and you will find your place in the world and, and it'll all work out. Mm -hmm. I'll, um, I would like to say the same that you will have, well, that's very different too. That's something that's certainly different from when we were in school. You already, you know, you will have many jobs in your lifetime. There's no such thing as working at one company for 40 years. So um, I think my advice is to stay curious, um, lifelong learner. I mean, that's probably one of the best things I got from my academics at Bucknell is just critical thinking and knowing how to learn. And that I think is the most important thing is wanting to learn and knowing how to learn and just asking people, you know, the, the word networking is still intimidating to me, frankly, but just ask people like, hey, do you, can you help me with this? Or can you tell me about what you do? Just looking at it as making those, those connections. Um, oh shoot, and there's, oh gosh. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. So to the point that people, everyone's faking it, what Susie said about me being so confident and, 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 and at Bucknell, not at all, not at all. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about that for a little while, but in no way was I that, was I confident. Um, I guess I did a good job of faking it, uh, but it's okay to not know and to ask for help. I think that would be, and there's so many people who are want to help you. That's something important to remember. And don't, don't think you have to go it alone. That's mm -hmm. my final thought on that for now. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for all your advice. I know I was like stepping on the shoulders of like swim giants at Bucknell and I'm really lucky for our great history, but like just hearing your voices and like hearing your advice really, really means a lot. And I'm glad 
I, I'm fortunate I was on this opportunity and I hope all of my teammates can hear this as well. But like, I really, really enjoyed talking to you and taking your advice. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, and I think we got, we got time for one more question, Todd. All right, so this is our final question and maybe it pulls together a lot of the threads that we've talked about. It's just great advice from all of you. Um, you know, each of you played an integral role in building the program to what it is now. As Sophia so nicely said early in the call, you know, it's been a couple of years since you uh, ended your time. <laughs> um, but perhaps that perspective gives weight to, to your um, feelings and, and you know, an understanding of what that experience meant for you at this point. And so my question for you all at this point is, what advice do you have to me um, and to our whole team right now to help continue to kind of grow the, the program, the tradition, and all the things that you've contributed to, to get to Bucknell at this point? How do we continue that forward from your perspective that you've gained at this point? That's a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, I you think we need them more than rice cakes. Yeah. <laughs> good. Put a little peanut butter on there. <laughs> a little peanut butter on your rice cake. <laughs> Sorry. I think just what this, you know, kind of year has, has taught me, um, you know, looking at, you know, looking at my daughter, who's a, you know, a student athlete going through this and, you know, just look, watching her, um, I think just having perspective um, and realizing that, you know, when, when someone comes into, you know, into school, I think, you know, you, you define yourself, or I very much define myself as a swimmer um, who, was, who was at a great school, right? So I was a student athlete, but I was probably more of an athlete than I was, you know, a, a student at that point, or that's really how I define myself. Um, and I feel like this year for, for a lot of athletes has really shaken that, you know, kind of core identity, right? If I'm not a swimmer, you know, what am I? Um, but I, like I said, I watched my daughter who has a different approach to swimming and how she adapted. Um, and she took advantage of so many different things that she might not have done, you know, if, if she was spending more time in the pool. Um, and so I think it's just kind of coming in and, and looking at Bucknell. And, and I think I would have liked to take advantage of some different opportunities. Um, and I think I did that over the course of, of my four years and, and evolved kind of to be less of a swimmer and more of a, you know, kind of an athlete, um, a student athlete, if, if you will. Um, and I just was amazed, like I said, I have that, my example of, of my daughter, but I think um, it's probably happened to a lot of people, regardless if you're in college or out of college is just, you know, kind of being flexible and, and making sure that you have a, a, a broad perspective um, and you can adapt to change. So um, that's, that's what I have to offer. Thank you. Well, I, I'll jump in. I, I've seen you in action, Dan, <laughs> because Caroline swam for you. And I can't tell you how much fun it was. Um, you have a lot of authority with the kids and, and Caroline, as you know, is a very reserved person. And when she came in, she was pretty green, you know, that this was the biggest program she swam for. So the beginning, you know, maybe she wasn't doing her times that she thought she should be doing. And, and you could see her, you know, getting out from a race and being very unsure. And the, the coaches are standing there along the side and, you know, if you've done a good job, you go over and talk to coach. But if you haven't done a good job or if you're not sure, you kind of sneak behind. So I, I always had a bird's eye view of this. And I remember when Caroline started turning in some good times and you could tell she was really happy with herself. And you could tell that because she made a beeline right for you. And, and, and from then on, once she started to get the ball rolling a little bit, um, it was just fun to watch her swim like from then on, you know, and, but it wasn't just what happened, you know, in the pool, it was definitely what happened um, in the, the social life of the, of the pool and the, the 
dynamics of the team and everyone comes in with um, problems and, and that's uh, not problems, but just, just different life experiences that you ha as a coach have to be, I don't even know how you do it and I don't think I have advice for it, but it's something that is, uh, that as a parent, I appreciate watching what you did with the kids in that, from that side of it, you know, their, their personal development. I mean, you know, Caroline, she blossomed not just in swimming, but in all other ways. And so I would say, just keep, keep focusing on that. Cause that, that as a parent, I was very, very happy to see over the four years. Thank you. It means a lot to hear you say that. One of the things that I was so impressed in the, the few meets that I have seen is the two, the, the men's and women's teams coming together. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we did not have. There was, there was not a good, there really wasn't a great relationship between the two teams. Um, there wasn't that um, combined, I don't know, yeah, per perspective. Um, so, so that's always been fun for me. The few meets I've seen, the men and the women cheering for each other, you know, equally and just that much uh, more power in numbers. And so, um, and, and adding, and how, how you do this, I don't know, but making sure these other women have said it better, more eloquently than I, but uh, that there is more to life than swimming. It's a huge thing, it's a huge commitment, but it really is important. And Cheryl, maybe you can, you know, you can speak to this because you may not be able to do it. And Karen, you so well put that so well that it's an important part of the identity, but how do you make sure that you still um, are developing those other aspects of yourself, your life, and yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, Kathy, thank you. you know, I, it was really hard after after I couldn't swim anymore because it was something like you identify yourself so much as as a swimmer and like it's your whole um, you know it's your whole social aspect as well you know you, ha you go all go to meals together and um, study together and hang out together and um, so to have that taken away was was really hard um, but I have to I mean that, you know, the pool aspect was taken away, but I, I didn't really lose um, the, the rest of it because it, because we were such a close group of, of, of people. And um, I always really appreciated that, you know, I, that, that I could maintain that friendship with everybody, despite the fact that I wasn't doing those grueling workouts anymore and they were, and I'm sure they probably were not happy about it when I could show up all chipper and, and not exhausted like they were. Um, so I'm sure sometimes they probably resented the fact that I was not in that pool with them anymore, but, uh, they never, they never let me know that. Um, but it was, it was, a, it, it was a great, um, great group of women that I, that I, that I got to know. Yeah. We were just jealous because you didn't smell like chlorine anymore. <laughs> I mean, we do resent you now for being in La Paz, is it? Yeah. That, that's more of an issue right now. I, I was I had a tr little technical difficulties logging in, and so I had to quickly find a sunny spot. And I was going to try to hide in a corner and not let you know. <laughs> but um, actually, one one bit of advice as a coach I have is that I think um, sprinters should have to swim a lot more distance at workouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cheryl! We just work to keep them in the same that. amount of the time. That, that's <laughs> usually our goal. More starts and turns. I think you should practice yeah. starts and turns more often. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I mean, we, we, come on, Karen and Karen and Kathy and I would still be in that pool slogging away, and there's Susie drying off. Getting... <laughs> I was not. I was not drying off. <laughs> you didn't even you didn't do doubles. You didn't even have to do the doubles. Yeah, I did doubles. Oh, I, I did two. I had to swim two laps. I had to do <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> This has, this has gone on, by the way, for 30 years. I have had to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> Silly sprinters. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess finally, any advice, Stan, is uh, enjoy the successes and celebrate. 
I think that with it, it's it can be very stressful being a an athlete, and I think athletes can be pretty hard on themselves. I think we probably all have them, and so um, I think it's good that coaches keep that into perspective and that again take the time to celebrate and enjoy the successes. Yeah, enjoy the journey. I think, right? I think that's, you put it in perspective, even though for some of us, it was a much longer journey as we swam 66 laps while Susie swam two. Um, it, it's, you know, just, just enjoy. Sometimes I swam four. Maybe, yes. I, I know ECCs were very hard and challenging. Well, we didn't even have the 200s and the strokes when we swam, we swam the 50s. So there were some advantages to being <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I say though, Dan, Dan I'm, I'm, in, I'm so impressed that you guys get to, you know, I've seen so many other schools and programs that are shut down and it's fantastic that you're, uh, you know, Bucknell being, you know, <laughs> for all the, for all the, you know, having to travel so far into the middle of nowhere, I guess that now has its advantage to be <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Um, you get to, kids are still going to class and, and, and getting to stick, you know, take care, you know, continue with their sports. So um, no. they're all very, they appreciate how lucky they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Bucknell bubble does, you know, does the trick. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Sophia, what do you, what distances do you swim? I, I don't know. I didn't want to speak up earlier, but I am also a sprinter. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yep>. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, need our advice. You've got it figured out. <laughs> Come on. My son, my son was a uh, when high school. He he came home. And he goes, oh, I did really great time in the five hundred, and I started laughing. I and he goes, What? I go, You're going to be swimming that forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never make that mistake. See. So the next meet, he dogged it, and the coach was so mad at him, and but never made him do it again. So he got to. <laughs> Sophia came in with a little bit of background in the five hundred, but managed to drop that very quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 1500 and 200. Well, my my dad used to come. He came maybe one or two meets. It was a it was a long trip, and I used to swim the thousand and the 500 every meet. And you know what he told me? He's like, well, at least I can watch it for a while. I couldn't imagine if he drove all that way and I was in the you know pool for 25 seconds. That would have been an awfully long trip for a very short uh, race. <laughs> So it worked out that way, I guess, or at least that's what he told me. Good advice there as well. So I know we are starting to get to the tail end, so I'm going to kick it back over to Todd to uh, kind of pull this together. But this this has been wonderful. Um, just a lot of great memories, great advice. And so um, I echo Sophia, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for taking the time. It's been wonderful. Thank great, you for thanks. having yeah, Thanks for the opportunity. It's thanks been fun. Much. Thanks, Dan, and uh, um, to start my closing comments and direct those to Sophia first. And Sophia, first of all, thanks again for being here tonight and, and taking the time out from your studies. Um, and from the bottom of my heart and any of the staff that works here at Bucknell, we have the utmost respect for the student athletes and what you guys are going through every day. It's, it's, it's frustrating not knowing from one day to the next whether you're gonna be able to practice, whether you're gonna be able to compete, what's going to happen but we're all keeping our fingers crossed that you'll be able to get into that pool behind me and, and do some damage this spring uh, as a member of our swim program so best of luck to you uh, and thanks again for being here and then to the alums for being here tonight first of all thanks so much for what you did while you were members of the orange and blue and how you represented the school while you were here as a student athlete but maybe more importantly thanks for what you've done since you've graduated um, and i tell everybody that i, I talk to we wouldn't have the facilities we have, like the one behind me. We wouldn't have the opportunities that our student athletes do have without the support of our alums. And I really thank you for the continued support you do give to our program, so thank you for that. And then for those of you tonight that tuned in to watch at home, thanks for doing so, and go Bison. <laughs>